Uh, thank you for finding a few minutes with us this morning. It's a busy time at the nation's capital, as you just pointed out. Um, one of the uh, more striking moments in the capital in recent weeks was uh, the House voting on uh, a bill to legalize cannabis federally. Uh, obviously, uh, the, the, the symbolism of a moment like that is tremendous. I'm curious what you think the practical outcome of that will be in the near future. Well, it's, it's beyond symbolism. I mean, this is the first time in history that we've actually had a vote on the floor of either chamber to end the failed war on drugs. And there have been virtually no uh, legislation about it at all. Uh, in the 50 year history of this um, failed experiment. Um, the fact that it passed uh, with fairly comfortable margin, uh, it had a half dozen uh, Republicans and one independent that voted. We lost very few Democrats. Um, the opportunity to reinforce on the floor of the house, what is happening with the rest of America? I mean, this month, this last month, the election, we had votes in South Dakota, in Mississippi, where the voters kind of figured out how to get around a, a poison pill that was crafted by the uh, old guard in the Republicans in the Mississippi state legislature. Um, that it passed in South Dakota, both medical and adult use. Um, and very significantly, it passed in Arizona with an overwhelming majority, 60-40. And it's very likely that that strong vote for cannabis provided the margin that enabled Joe Biden to carry the state of Arizona for the presidential election. And by the same token, there was a, a very strong vote in New Jersey, which has had trouble kind of putting it together. There's, uh, but they did a uh, strong vote. It's going to be one of the largest cannabis markets in the country. Um, I think this was extraordinarily significant in terms of the American public has signaled what they want. The polls at, at the ballot box are the most compelling. Um, there is a report from the uh, Congressional Budget Office that documents uh, how this is going to make a difference with 73,000 years of prison time that will be reduced. It's going to cut a billion dollars out of the uh, federal prisons budget. Um, uh, this, is, uh, this is making our point at a time when the American public uh, have been ever more focused. Uh, I don't know when the, when the dominoes start to fall in the Senate. They're sitting on our Safe Banking Act. Um, this week, I have my research bill. Um, but pressure is mounting uh, for racial justice, prison reform, health care. Uh, and I, I think it's extraordinarily significant that we were able to finally have an opportunity to vote on it on the floor of the House. Do you have a sense of why cannabis sales are up during the pandemic? Do, do people talk to you about that? Well, part of it is being people are shut at home. There, there are less opportunities. Um, you know, I mean, we may even talk about uh, music venues. Uh, you know, there isn't access uh, to restaurants. I mean, I think, uh, and, and frankly, there are people who are uh, maybe doing a little self-medicating in terms of uh, being anxious, nervous, depressed. Um, uh, we know that medical cannabis has a profound effect. 
dealing with chronic pain, uh, dealing with depression. Uh, uh, this is a time when people are focusing more on their health, I think. Uh, so it, it makes sense if you take a step back and look at the big picture uh, that there would be more activity. And, and frankly, part of it is just the exponential growth of cannabis utilization and making it more mainstream. All the CBD products, um, hemp products. I mean, this is, this is something that uh, people uh, are basically utilizing in a way that is is very mainstream. It's not out of the ordinary anymore. I, I am stunned at people I hear uh, who, who use uh, medical cannabis or who are uh, employing it uh, for adult use. So anybody I know? I'm sure you know people. <laughs> and some of them may surprise you. So do you have any hesitation, I mean, any concerns about seeing the number of people use it, you know, smoking or otherwise consuming cannabis? Do you have any concerns about seeing that number rise? Well, let me, let me say, um, I mean, I've never used it myself. I have no intention of doing it, at least not until it's fully legal because I don't want to undercut my credibility. Although if I had a medical condition uh, that medical cannabis uh, would help, I wouldn't hesitate for a moment. And I've advised some of my friends who I thought were in a situation would help um, uh, that, they, that they do so. Uh, I am deeply concerned that we don't have clear messages for the American public. It's like Donald Trump out there urging people to vote in the Georgia Senate election, but saying the Georgia elections are flawed and cheap. Um, the federal government lies to people about the harms and the, and the uh, effects of cannabis. It is not highly addictive. We have lots of legal things that are more addictive. Start with tobacco, which actually kills people. Um, I don't want kids to use it. It, it, it messes with the developing brain. Um, and people who use it need to be, I think, very careful about how they use it. I mean, anytime you're smoking something, uh, that poses problems for, for our lungs. I think but the federal government has been part of sending mixed messages, making a schedule one controlled substance. So people don't take them seriously. Kids don't take them seriously. Um, yes, I'm concerned. Um, I am deeply concerned about people who don't understand the impact of cannabis and alcohol. I mean, cannabis per se um, is, does not uh, interfere. It doesn't make people aggressive. It, uh, it's not something that leads to, um, you know, dangerous driving. People just kind of pull over to a 7-Eleven and get a bag of Doritos. Um, but it, when it's used with alcohol, uh, it really can, can be seriously uh, dangerous. Right. You know, Marine so showed up in uh, right. in, uh, yeah, uh, wash down a bag of chewables with uh, a, a bottle of Chablis and had a bad trip. 